And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, coming to us straight from Roleplay Elixir and currently developing... Caravia Victor, which could be described as Roman punk fantasy. The one and only Metwet Batuan. And I and I screwed the thing up in my ex, in my excitement. Sorry about that. How are you doing today, man? Or tonight yeah, in your case. Uh, I'm, fine. Thank, uh, I'm very fine. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and honored to be uh, as your guest uh, in the monastery. So, it's been, it has been, it, it has certainly been a hot minute since I've had you, had you on. In fact, let me, ch in fact, the last time I had you on was way, was way back in June. Um, so how, how is, how is the pro, how is the project been going on? I know you put up a update back in October, back on, back in October. Yes, we have done the October update, and uh, we will uh, soon release our uh, update for uh, this month in uh, in a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going uh, it's going well actually. Um, everything I can say that everything is going uh, as planned. We were uh, we we have done all the writing that we want to. That we wanted to do until this time, uh, and uh, we we have uh, very few writing uh, to be left. Uh, I can say that uh, we it's uh, about the writing process. Uh, we have only to write some of the um, some of the backer requests mm -hmm. uh, on our uh, pledge levels. Uh, on the highest level, we uh, uh, we offered people to uh create and write something for them and uh what they designed and our imperator uh pledge uh backers um they they told us about uh, what they had in their minds uh one of them wanted an uh, an empress uh to be uh, created for him and another uh some an artifact a sword uh, some kind of a Persian sword, and uh, we are we are writing these uh, right now, and some of them we already did. Uh, some we are uh, just getting uh, started. Uh, we are also uh, uh, expanding our uh, adventure. Uh, we we have given a very uh, little and short adventure in the demo booklet. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the full book, we wanted to expand that and um, offer um, something that would last for maybe three or five sessions uh, with lots of more uh, content about uh, Karolia Victor, lots of more um, stuff that you will see in other uh, parts of the books, uh, the monsters the, the, in the, and also about the lore sections, the factions you see in the book. Uh, and we uh, try to implement uh, some of them, obviously not all, not all of them, but uh, some of them into our adventure. Uh, so uh, we are expanding the ex adventure a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what can I say about the writing. And the illustration parts are also uh, very good. Our full... Uh, our full page illustrations are uh, complete. Uh, our commission um, illustrators have, have all there have all done their uh, work uh, very well, and we uh, we are thankful for that. And uh, we we hope that uh, we can uh, that they have been able to uh, illustrate uh, exactly what we had uh, in mind for uh, for this. I think uh, of a Roman Empire themed uh, fantasy on uh, the Karelia Victor. So uh, we have, as I said, some of the backer requests are uh, already in progress, and uh, the writing process and the draw sorry the drawing process is 
uh, is yeah very pretty much complete uh, but only some of the backer requests are to be uh, illustrated mm -hmm. now and, uh, soon I hope in uh, in uh, two or maximum uh, in two I hope in uh, in two months we will uh, we will have the PDF version uh, available mm -hmm. uh, so you and uh, all our backers <laughs> can see them uh, hopefully uh, in a few months yep. now when it come now when it came to when it came to the te when it came to the testing uh, of yeah. of cer of certain of certain builds and and the like throughout through the adventure and some and possibly some other adventures you're you're use you're using within Caravea. Um, were there any, were there any were there any build were there any builds that you f any builds especially with the subclasses that you're adding to 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 the fifth edition setup that you that had to get a bit tweaked bef um, in the interim? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have uh, we have changed uh, some um, some abilities uh, of the uh, archetypes mm -hmm. uh, we have designed, uh, but um, most importantly, we have changed uh, one of the classes totally. Uh, so we um, we offered to uh, have two classes. Actually, one of them was um, unlocked by a stretch goal uh, after we. Uh, reached a, a certain limit uh, in the Kickstarter process. We uh, we unlocked that, and uh, it was the, the Legatus class, the uh, let's say the commander and general uh, of of the uh, of the Karoian uh, Empire. Mm. Uh, it's uh, so this this remained uh pretty much the way we uh we the way we have written it and the play tests uh made sure that it was uh it was good but um about the other class the one we have um we have earlier designed uh we uh, we had some uh pr priest like class it was a fl it was flamen yep. uh we um we took inspiration from the uh, ancient Roman priests uh, about it. Uh, we had some written stuff. We had uh, we had the uh, general mechanics. And uh, once we have uh, written the whole class, uh, and uh, after the playtests, uh, we saw that, uh, yeah, our playtesters were actually uh, not very happy with its it's not because of the uh, the mechanics, or it's not because of uh, how do you say the un the unbalancing uh, side or balance issues uh, or its strong sides or weak sides. It's not uh, pretty much about that, but it's more like we we had feedback that uh, hey. Uh, Already in the uh, in the Dungeons and Dragons, we have a cleric class that that does uh, the priest job uh, pretty well, and uh, it's actually a warrior priest also, and uh, a priest that can kick ass if if, if she wants that. So um, okay, it's very cool to uh, play your your uh, version of the priest, uh, but. Uh, many, many, many of our playtesters uh, said that yeah, I would rather play a cleric uh, than playing this. It's, the cleric is much stronger, and um, if only uh, I would play a flaman, uh, our uh, original priest, uh, it would be because that uh, you know uh, to get the feeling of uh, true um, true ancient Rome uh, to be a to um, experience what uh, uh, a priest uh, would be on these days, and but um, yeah, many of them say that uh, it's not very a great uh, driver for them. So uh, we changed it 
uh, completely. Uh, we said, okay, that's if that's what you say, you know, uh, we feel uh, we feel you're correct entirely, uh, and we um, we changed the thing completely, and we have uh, come up with the uh, Oracle class. Mm-hmm. Uh, so our inspiration for it was obviously the Oracle at Delphi in the uh, in the ancient Greece. Uh, d- during the Roman times, it uh, it uh, it lost some of its prestige, but it was still uh, uh, it was still a, a strong figure, and uh, some emperors and some nobles were already consulting uh, for, uh, at this priest at this uh, oracle, mm-hmm. and there were also many other oracles in uh, every society. Uh, so, and the the. The whole concept of Oracle was uh, something that uh, that there was nothing like it in uh, the in Dungeons and Dragons. So yeah, okay, cleric can uh, do some divination spells and it can act as an oracle, but uh, it's it's not in uh, uh, it's not its main focus. Mm-hmm. So we wanted something to uh, be. Um, we, we wanted to give something uh, as an oracle that its main focus is divination, telling uh, about the future. Uh, and uh, in the games, uh, give something to the players that they will uh, really feel. Um, how do you say it? feel it, the feeling of originality? It, uh, something that would create the feeling of originality. Uh, and authenticity so uh, we included that Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was the biggest change we made uh, in the how to say the the new rules or the new uh, new mechanics and the new class we uh, we give Mm -hmm. now within the within that there were um, obviously when it came to some of the stretch goals because of the fact that those stretch goals hadn't exactly been reached when I did the interview with you originally, um, I didn't have the opportunity to co- to cover some of the ones you had unlo- that were unlocked. So I would li- I I would like I would like to do that. The first the first one does involve the backgrounds, which is something that um, we didn't really touch on originally, and. I would, and as a result, I would like to, I would like to ask about a few, a few examples of background that are in the core that were already going to be written, and then transition over to the three new, to the three new backgrounds that were unlocked with the first stretch goal. Okay, great. Uh, so the the uh, the first stretch goal, yes, we unlocked the uh, backgrounds. Um, we. This was something actually that we uh, we would uh, we thought we would do anyways. So uh, it was an early stretch goal, and we had something in mind for this. And uh, when it was unlocked, yeah, we were yeah, totally happy uh, with it. And uh, because if it hadn't been unlocked, uh, that there would be no background, no new backgrounds in the uh, in the book. Uh, but yeah, we had something in mind and. With this, we had the chance to uh, and the uh, and the drive to write them. Uh, so uh, we we introduced uh, three uh, new backgrounds for uh, the uh, fifth edition setting, the fifth edition system, uh, which are uh, some of them are similar to uh, something that exists uh, in the uh, original uh, rule book, but um, some are uh, our new uh, additions. Uh, mm-hmm. For this, we we wanted to uh, give something original about the uh, about the Roman Empire and our version, our fantasy version of it, the Carovian Empire. So we included a patrician, uh, the plebeian, and Saros background. Mm-hmm. What what do they mean? The patrician is is the um, how to say the creme de la creme, the the, the most elite. Uh, part of the uh, 
Karovian Empire. So uh, there is a there is a, a noble uh, background in the uh, original rulebook, uh, but the noble is somehow uh, it's it seems uh, like a uh, okay it, it's it's some noble. Uh, from uh, it, it can be anyone uh, with a little bit uh, of uh, noble blood, uh, but patrician is uh, the the true elite uh, of the society. They are uh, first of all, if you are not Karovian, if you are not the, uh, if you are not one of the uh, humans of this uh, of this uh, Karovian uh, empire, and if you are not one of the uh, the most uh, noble houses that formed the Karovian Empire, you, you can't be a patrician at all. It's, uh, it's, it's something that uh, gives you... Uh, that, uh, it's something coming with a birthright. Mm -hmm. But there's also a, uh, there's also a uh, twist here. So uh, within the uh, Karovian society, uh, the concept of um, nobility is... Uh, okay, if you have that birthright, you are noble. Uh, it's no problem. But if you don't, you can still be adopted into a noble house, and uh, you can also have uh, the uh, same privileges. Uh, but of course, for this, you have to be uh, very useful uh, for uh, for one of these noble houses, for for one of these patrician. Uh, houses so uh, and uh, they do not do that very often uh, but in the end they may choose to uh, adopt uh, into their family uh, a person who is who, who is a who's a commoner who is a normal citizen uh, and uh, make her uh, uh, a patrician mm. uh, so that's it our uh, our greatest noble so playing a patrician means uh, in the Karovian Empire, that wherever you go, it's it's not only okay, my lord, you have you are welcome here. It's it's not only that. It's uh, you are uh, received, uh, you, uh, you are welcomed as the as with greatest uh, respect that uh, anyone can offer. Uh, people will uh, people will think uh, very seriously uh, about uh, declining your offers or. Uh, or officers and uh, the the um, and the soldiers uh, and the most of the commoners they will do nearly everything uh, within uh, their within their capacity to help you and um, help you on your quests. So this is the patrician. The plebeian mm -hmm. we have. Um, the plebeians, the basically the commoners of the empire. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you. Uh, yeah, you may say, okay, it's uh, it doesn't seem very uh, how to say it doesn't seem uh, very cool to <laughs> uh, play a normal person. Uh, but uh, the fact that the uh, plebeians, uh, we what what difference it has from um, from choosing any other background in the uh, original book is that it's uh, focus on uh, uh, focus on uh, the ability to uh, do hard work and uh, rational thinking so the um, the plebeians are uh, how to say they are they, they know uh, what what they will face. Uh, they are not dreamers. Uh, they know how to. Uh, they know exactly how to uh, accomplish a job and what materials they need. And uh, they also know if eventually if they will be able to do it or not. Uh, so they live a hard life, and uh, they have to be uh, very rational about um, their. Um, their their choices. Uh, they have because they have few uh, resources. They have uh, okay. They're not mm -hmm. slaves or they're very very poor. But 
uh, they have little uh, within their uh, hands and uh, they have to use this uh, very uh, in a in a very efficient manner. So uh, our uh, by playing a plebeian, uh, you will be you will be very good uh, artisan. You you may be a very good uh, merchant, uh, or you may be a very good laborer that knows uh, her job uh, truly. So and uh, it's. Uh, its motto is that no nonsense. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, uh, they, they, uh, if they want to do something, uh, they they make a good plan and they do it. If they think that it's impossible, uh, yeah, it, it may not. Uh, they they know that it's impossible beforehand. Let's mm -hmm. say. So uh, and the last option is the uh, service, the our slave. Uh, Let's say, uh, it, yes, it's actually very, uh, it's actually a very bad thing to be a slave, uh, but it also has a brotherhood of its own, uh, or a sisterhood, let's say. So, um, if you are a slave, okay, you will, uh, you will be maybe uh, not taken in, not taken uh, in too seriously uh, by the upper by some of the upper classes, uh, but other slaves will uh, actually try to help you whenever they can. And uh, sometimes uh, maybe it's a slave that has the uh, that has the most vital in information about uh, about something, or a slave has heard something and she will never tell it. Uh, maybe a slave has heard a secret about uh, her dominus and her domina and she will never tell it to another uh, except another slave. Uh, so being a slave gives access to you uh, to this uh, special uh, brotherhood uh, among other slaves uh, and you will, you will learn many information from uh, other slaves that mm -hmm. Uh, they, that they would never uh, reveal to uh, other people. And uh, that's pretty much all about our new backgrounds. All right. Now, with, with, what, comes, with what comes next, there, was, um, there were two new archetypes that were added in the second stretch goal. Um, mm -hmm. The Equitus for the fighter and the Velitus for the... Ranger, um, what can you tell me about what about what those two add to their particular classes? So uh, the Equitas is the, uh, the the cavalry troops of the uh, Karawin Empire. So uh, it's uh, it's it, actually the uh, it's a, it's a it's a horseman. It's uh, it's a knight. Uh, if you want to uh, say that, so uh, it, equites uh, are really uh, excel at uh, fighting on uh, horseback or fighting on mounts. Uh, so, and uh, uh, what it differs from the uh, the medieval version of a knight is that uh, because that the uh, the full plates armor or uh, these very heavy armors are not uh, introduced yet, um, the, uh, and they are certainly uh, not available in the uh, Karolia Victor's uh, world. Uh, we, the Equites are also uh, excellent at uh, also at light uh, light cavalry uh, positions. So. Uh, if they want to uh, get away from danger pretty quickly, they can they can uh, do that uh, very well. Uh, about the other one, the Velites is the is our um, archetype that if you want to play a ranger that that excels at javelin, uh, that excels at a javelin thrower uh, and an ambusher, uh, that's what you get. Uh, the Velites uh, uses her javelins very deadly 
and if uh, she can ambush uh, an opponent, it's uh, it's it's double deadly. Mm -hmm. So um, these are uh, these are basically um, what we offer. So I can go into detail and tell you about uh, all their uh, class uh, or archetype abilities, but um, I don't know. I and uh, for the um, for maybe for uh for the mystery let's yeah. <laughs> let's say that you will all see what they do uh when the pool walk is released <laughs> yeah um oh. and at the third at the third one you ended up unlocking a second brand new class the legatus um yes which if um which the way the way it's described in the the way it's described on the Kickstarter page, would it be fair of me to say that they're a that they that they feel the archetype of the lead from the front battle captain? Yes, they are um, actually uh, the the um, the stereotype for the Legatus is yeah uh, as you described a uh, uh, frontline commander, uh, frontline captain, mm -hmm. uh, but we uh, have. Uh, our archetypes that we designed for this class uh, have three options. So, what is Legatus? Basically, it's it's a commander, and um, um, it's uh, it's not only the commander of uh, the, the name uh, gives you the impression that it's only uh, for the Karovian Empire, but uh, we designed it. We said in the end, it can be any type of commander. You can also uh, play. Say let's say let's say an Egyptian commander or or a Greek uh, commander if you like or a Persian commander. Uh, just the name Legatus uh, is very sounds very original and um, tells uh, what we want to describe. So uh, we gave it the, this name, but uh, you, like you don't have to be uh, uh, you don't have to belong to the Karovian Empire to. Mm -hmm. Uh, play it like Atos, uh, so say first of all. all right. And then uh, the Legatus has uh, three archetypes. One of them is uh, the captain. Uh, as you said, it's uh, the frontline commander. It's the uh, commander uh, who uh, fights on uh, with together uh, with uh, her troops and and encourages them to uh, fight better, encourages them to protect themselves better, uh, and uh, makes sure that um, no one uh, falls into a fear or terror uh, very quickly. Uh, so, and it, it leads from the front line. Uh, the, the other archetype uh, of this class is the tactician. Uh, it's, uh, it masters uh, when it stays uh, a little bit uh, behind, uh, when, um, like a, maybe a, like a chess player. Uh, it can uh, direct uh, more orders uh, to her uh, to her troops, and uh, it can uh, it can uh, survey the battlefield uh, and estimate where the enemy will strike mm -hmm. uh, and make uh, tactical uh, decisions uh, more efficiently. And the last one is the uh, the arcane officer. Basically, uh, the arcane officer can uh, use magic uh, and uh, it, apart from uh, her standard abilities, and uh, it can offer better protection against enemy mages. Uh, to uh, to the troops uh, under her command or her companions, if uh, if she's the uh, party of a part of a group. Mm -hmm. uh, so mechanically, what do they do? The, uh, the uh, signature ability of the legatus is a, a stratagem. Uh, a stratagem. Uh, th there are a lot of there are like. 15 stratagems uh, that you can choose from, and uh, you can learn them uh, according to your intelligence uh, modifier. So if your uh, intelligence modifier is 3, uh, you, 
you can have three stratagems uh, at your at your disposal to use. Uh, you can uh, so with using them, uh, you can uh, you, you can make one of your uh, one of your uh, comrades uh, make an extra attack, or uh, you can or help one of your comrades disengage. Uh, from battle and also make an attack after that uh, or uh, you can make all your uh, comrades f uh, form into a straight line of battle and uh, get a better protection uh, from, from missiles and ranged attacks uh, or you can uh, make um, you can um, you can have them move uh move an extra uh an additional at an extra uh speed um if they go all together mm. uh, things like that the uh, the stratagems uh are uh, like tactical orders that uh your character can uh, give mm. uh, of course all um, all legatus characters are uh, also able um uh, able fighters, uh, maybe not a great one-on-one -on -one fighter as the, the fight class, but uh, they they all they can all wear heavy armor, they can uh, use uh, any weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what they lack in this uh, fighting uh, skill, uh, they make it up with these uh, tactical orders, these stratagems, and uh, make their uh, comrades fight uh, way more efficient. Mm -hmm. Now, with now um, with the with the um, fourth one that was unlocked, um, there were two there were two new arch there were two new archetypes and three new um, ethnicities. Um, yep. Now the the ethnicities are our uh, how can I say maybe our. Uh, the, the most signature uh, feature of this whole setting and uh, of the Karavi Victor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and giving giving three more was uh, was something that we uh, it made us very happy. So uh, we had already designed uh, some uh, some ethnicities. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for uh, all inspired by the uh, the ancient peoples uh, and uh, these new ones would uh, would a little bit expand the map let's say uh, like we had already an e Egyptian but we didn't uh, we didn't uh, think about a Nubian one so uh, so our uh, this stretch goal uh, Helped us to discover also this uh, Nubian uh, ethnicity, mm -hmm. and we had a, uh, we had an African uh, ethnicity, and this uh, the next would be uh, the African is more like a, uh, it's a it's a g generic ethnicity that you can use for any uh, for any uh, human from the African. Uh, side, mm. uh, but the Libyan mm. focuses on uh, that area, and uh, actually, if you're a Libyan, uh, you're you're most probably from Carthage, also, mm -hmm. uh, or say Carthaga, uh, as the as the Corellians call it. And the last one is Britain. Uh, uh, actually, the island uh, of uh, Britain is uh, not. Uh, is not under uh, Karovian rule like it did in history. Uh, it was uh, the actual, the real island of Britain was uh, for, for a short uh, for a short period of time. Uh, it was ruled by the Roman Empire, but in our case, um, it's it's not like that. It's the Karovian Empire uh, tried to uh, invade this island, but uh, or the, let's say the the land. Uh, of th this uh, region, they don't know yet. Uh, the, the, ma the maps are not very accurate. They don't know it's a full continent or it's an island. Uh, they don't. They know very few about uh, these lands. Uh, they try to uh, invade it, and uh, 
they built some forts, but mm-hmm. yeah, they, uh, they couldn't uh, stand their ground uh, and because of many uh, factors. Uh, and uh, they didn't they didn't conquer the uh, Britain. So uh, with the Britain ethnicity, we can also look at uh, the culture of the uh, people uh, living in those lands. And yeah, we are thankful uh, to have unlocked uh, these uh, these these goals because it really um, expanded our uh, maps a little bit and uh, it helped us uh, write and design more about uh, these lands. Now, with now with that in, with that kind of thing in mind. Um... When bring when bringing in when bringing in newcomers for play, for um play tests, um, especially when you're dealing with a with a setting that's so different from the style of fantasy that so many people aren't, um, whether fortunately or unfortunately, used to. What sort of um what's what sort of skinny do you usually do you usually give them and how and how do you and in the full in the full book proper, how do you make how do you make sure to de- to deal with the possibility of con- of continuity lockout, or th- or the idea that you have to that you have to be versed in all of this lore with Car- with Caravia before you even start? Yeah, um, yes, actually, it's uh, it's a tricky uh, it's the tricky side, but. Um, and that's exactly why uh, we wanted to uh, give our um, adventure, uh, give an example adventure uh, in, the, uh, in the book. Uh, there is already one in the demo booklet, but as I say, it will be uh, it will be very much expanded. Uh, and uh, and also that's exactly why that this adventure uh, focuses on the on a on a border conflict. Uh, in Germania, uh, so okay, you um, let's say honestly that um, if you when you think about Rome, when any anyone uh, thinks about the, the Roman Empire, mm-hmm. uh, of course it's uh, it can be it can be the, the glorious city of Rome that you come that first comes into mind. But the second thing that comes into mind uh, is uh, the its conflict with the barbarians uh, at its borders and its uh, it struggle to uh, survive uh, after uh, after the empire has uh, expanded uh, its its borders. So um, many people have seen the movie Gladiator, and many people are uh, very actually familiar with the. Uh, with, with the whole, with this whole struggle, and uh, there are there are many movies that depict them, uh, the the struggle of the uh, of Car- Roman <laughs> legions uh, at the front line, uh, and uh, how they try to uh, stop the barbarians from uh, raiding their lands, etc. So um, this part, uh, people can become familiar very quickly. So uh, in the adventure, uh, we put them, uh, we, we put them uh, in, the, in the new version of, of our adventure. Uh, we put the new players uh, right uh, in, the, uh, in the middle of a, a forest, uh, which is very close to Germania. And uh, they have to travel to a, uh, to a uh, Karolian uh, legion uh, camp, uh, which is, which is again, uh, many people are uh, familiar with the Roman Empire's uh, war camps, their legion camps, uh, the, the ones that the uh, that the legionaries construct uh, in a, in uh, in one one day. Uh, they uh, it's a very compact uh, wooden uh, fort. Uh, so uh, we we put them right into the middle of the action uh, in this legion camp, and uh, we we give them a quest that is 
very very signature to uh, in, any <laughs> how do you say any heroic uh, Roman story. Uh, the, the, the quest is to uh, retrieve uh, a, a lost uh, banner, a lost legion banner uh, from from somewhere in the barbarian lands. Uh, the, like, the ninth, it, the ninth it, legion story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the, uh, actually, the story is uh, very much uh, used in many movies and mm-hmm. uh, in many stories. Uh, and also, there are uh, many fantasy uh, stories uh, about uh, the, these types of things. And so, maybe the the most famous ones, yes, as you mentioned, the Night Legion, uh, the Night Legion, and the um, the, the disaster at Totoberg Forest, uh, at the, uh, the the disaster that three legions uh, have been completely annihilated in uh, Germania, uh, and there was a there was a recent um, there was a recent TV series about it. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, People are very familiar with these kinds of things. So uh, actually, uh, this quest is doesn't require anyone to know any uh, any of the uh, lore that we we have written. Yes, yeah. yes, we have we have done it. We have written about the uh, the world's uh, origins. Um, how how do? But let's say we have written what the Carovians know uh, and what the Carovian scholars uh, think have happened uh, because th- they don't know actually what happened really but they have a theory and we included uh, it in the book um, we included how the elven uh, elven kingdoms and the dwarven empires have ruled before mm-hmm. but no player should be worried about these things and actually also the DM uh, the dungeon master or the game master should also not be worried about uh, reading all this stuff yeah, because it's uh, it's actually uh, it's actually a very classic and um, a very uh, how do you say uh, the struggle is uh, very uh, familiar. It's it's uh, it's the survival of a legion. Uh, you try to retrieve a legion banner from uh, from the barbarian lands. Uh, and you try to come back uh, before other barbarians and before uh, other uh, other dangers uh, come around you. You try to come back in time, and uh, then you have a surprise uh, during the uh, during the uh, when you try to enter uh, the the camp once again, uh, and. Yeah, let's say there are uh, everything that you would expect from a uh, a Roman story, like the betrayal, uh, the heroic fights, uh, the, the the struggle to defend the honor of a legion, and and a great battle, uh, and all uh, these are uh, included in our adventure. So uh, players will will it's it's just. Uh, enough that if a player says, "Okay, I want to uh, play a common soldier of the Karovin Empire," yeah, mm-hmm. okay, that's that's very enough for us uh, uh, for you to uh, play this adventure and play this setting. Or one can say that, "Yes, I was once a gladiator, uh, and now uh, after I got my uh, freedom, uh, I now I now work for uh, this noble person." Uh, who sent me here for this quest? Mm-hmm. It can be very basic, or it can be just like, yeah, yeah, I'm a priest of Jupiter, I'm a priest of uh, Apollo, or any uh, any any god or goddess uh, from the uh, from the Roman uh, and Carolian mythology, uh, and you can go on this uh, quest, uh, which is uh, which does not require any. Uh, it does not require that you read any uh, lore, uh, because, and uh, honestly, uh, for the player's part, if if you are playing a uh, Carolian, uh, it doesn't really matter that you know very much about the rest of the world, because 
yeah, Karolian Empire is the the greatest uh, the, the greatest civilization that uh, that mortal races can achieve. Uh, it, what happened in the past? Yeah, it's not important. The the, the ancient empires do not exist, uh, and the greatest empire that that is uh, still surviving is the Karolian Empire, and all the rest of the lands are just barbarian lands. Uh, be, be it ruled by dragons or giants or human barbarian tribes, it doesn't matter. They're, they're all barbarians. Uh, so you don't have to worry much uh, about these things. Hmm. Uh, it, you just have to go there, uh, fight your enemies, uh, fight your monsters in the name of the Empire and uh, the Legion, uh, and retrieve that Legion banner and bring uh, bring back the honor uh, of uh, of one of the legions. I, I don't know. I'm very um, I'm very excited to uh, talk about this this side of uh, this side of our uh, of our setting. I can talk for hours if you like, but uh, I, I hope it answers your question. Yeah. Um, and there's when it comes to, when it comes to when it comes to Roman storytelling. Um, there's a few, there's a few archetypes that, all, that, that, all, that a lot of people fall back on. Um, one of them, is, one of them is the gladiators, which I'll get into a minute. The other one okay. is the, is, um, the politics, i.e. who's assassinating who. Um, and when it comes, yeah. when it comes to, when it comes, when it comes to the latter, is that, is... Is it at the very, if not in it, if not a full-on adventure, but at the very least, advice on how, on how to run that particular adventure, going to be in the book, since that's a, since that's a fairly popular angle. What with the whole Roman handshake of shake with the left hand, stab with the right. Yeah, of course. So uh, apart from this full adventure, we are uh, also giving uh, many uh, storytelling ideas. They are like one paragraph or two paragraph. Uh, notes about uh, a particular story that you can run uh, in this setting. So uh, they're uh, they're distributed all in the book. So uh, some of them are uh, some of them are included in the archetypes section. Uh, some of them are included in the lore sections. Uh, whenever we are talking about something that is uh, that is as you say, the the the, uh, the, the very famous sides of uh, the of a Roman setting and uh, of our setting, uh, we are told we are giving some storytelling ideas, one paragraph or two paragraph uh, long. Uh, so these politic adventures are also included as uh, not a. Uh, not a very detailed adventure, but they're included as storytelling I guess, ideas. And also, uh, we have uh, five factions in the book. Um, the, the factions are uh, like the uh, the political or uh, the the groups that that unite uh, people under the same uh, goal, or if not the same, similar goal. Let's say. And uh, one of these factions that we give, uh, and we talk about them a lot. We talk about the the overview, the history of these factions, uh, the the organization uh, structures, uh, who is on top, who is giving orders to whom, and who how can the players and other uh, other people are recruited into this faction. Uh, some of these. Some of them are secret factions. Uh, some of them are not. And one of the factions is the uh, is the Patriarchs. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's the uh, it's the group that uh, let's say uh, as its uh, main objective, it tries to restore republic uh, to the uh, the Karovian state. Uh, mm -hmm. It tries to abolish the the empire, which uh, they see as a tyranny and uh, they want to destroy this uh, this this version of the empire and uh, they want to uh, build a republic uh, and uh, build the, 
the democracy that they desire. But but the key thing is that the, the democracy that they desire, uh, not the democracy uh, that maybe the common people desire. So uh, patriarchs are uh, in the uh, in the in the very uh, core form. Uh, they are actually very shrewd and. Maybe some of them are very evil senators who just want the power for themselves. Mm. Uh, they want the empire. They want the emperor gone uh, because the emperor takes it all. Uh, okay, they are wealthy, uh, and the emperor is sharing some of uh, his or her wealth uh, with the noble families. Uh, but uh, yeah, people always want more, and uh, it's better to get rid of the emperor and. It's better to uh, rule the Karovians, uh, the Karovian uh, Republic, uh, once more uh, as the uh, as the greatest elite. Uh, so uh, the, the Patriarchs, I think, uh, will fit in this uh, role or will fit in this type of an adventure uh, very well. Uh, if a game, if a game master or dungeon master wants to uh, uh, wants to focus on that side. Of the of a Roman story, and uh, and it's not only senators. Let's say the the uh, the, the faction uh, may include anyone. Like it can include an assassin. It can include a crime lord. Uh, it can include a merchant in its ranks. Uh, it doesn't have to be really a senator uh, to be a member of this uh, group. But but the main. Uh, the main uh, aim is that uh, they back up each other. They uh, they try to get rid of the ri- their rivals uh, together, and they try to uh, establish. They try to uh, put their members uh, into uh, efficient uh, positions of, of the empire. So, uh, and when the time is right, so when the time is right, uh, they can all act at the same time. And uh, and overthrow the emperor and uh, let's say uh, get get to the uh, key uh, get to the key um, positions uh, very quickly and uh, turn the uh, turn the empire into a republic uh, once again a republic that they want to rule. Uh, yeah, uh, that's it. So a, a player can be a part of that group. Uh, we have included some little rules for that. Uh, and as you advance in the in this uh, in this faction, uh, you are given uh, some special equipment. Uh, you are given some uh, new special abilities. Uh, but well, let's say they're not like classes. Not it's. So the advancement is not uh, something that is based on experience points or anything. It's it's based on what you actually do uh, for this faction uh, and uh, what you have accomplished. You can think of it like the uh, like the guilds in the uh, in the Elder Scrolls series, uh, uh, the Morrowind or uh, Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Let's say. Uh, they are more like that. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. We, we have Patriarchs, the uh, the shrewd senators who uh, want democracy, uh, want democracy for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of factions, um, back in April on the Roleplay Elixir website, you put up a pre- you put up a preview PDF for the Praetorian Guard faction, and within that. Obviously, obviously, it had, it had, th- it had some of the details on cohort Pretoria, the duties of a Praetorian guard, and the, re- the, um, um, requirements, ranks, but also feats. And I'm curious if, um, if the idea of if the idea of faction specific feats is something that's going to be a shared concept with all the factions in the book. Uh, yes, it is a shared uh, content, so all the factions will have uh, some uh, faction-specific feats, uh, but they will not be so numerous 
uh, for all of them. So uh, maybe one faction will have just uh, three or uh, four uh, feats uh, for the uh, for that faction, and uh, like in the Praetorian Guard, Praetorian Guards have the uh, greatest number of feats available for them. Uh, it's they're not very, very uh, strong feats, I, I know, but they're authentic and uh, they they give the players uh, something, uh, some privilege, uh, let's say, that the other players who do not belong to that faction, mm-hmm. uh, that, that they can't access. So uh, they, only uh, one of the Praetorian Guards can uh, take that feat. And uh, yes, they will all be uh, included. Um, as uh, and also the um, how to say uh, some some of them also uh, some of the ranks also uh, come uh, with special equipment mm-hmm. uh, as I said they are that are uh, given to uh, to only those of uh, those with with that uh, specific title or rank uh, within the faction. Uh, some of these items are very strong magical items. Uh, the ones included in the Temple of Augustus and uh, the Concilio Bagostro. Mm. Uh, and some of them are, let's say, only um, symbolic. Yes, they have some magical abilities, but uh, it's it's not very very. Uh, it's not a very uh, legendary item, let's say. Yeah. By the way, we have uh, f- from that PDF we worked on, and uh, now uh, the uh, the Praetor- the cohort Praetoria, uh, the, the Praetorian Guard, uh, takes like uh, eight pages uh, in the book. So uh, the, the, our previous version uh, was like something like four pages. Uh, we we have written more about them. We have uh, we have detailed their organization. Uh, charts. We have uh, detailed uh, their history, uh, actually, uh, and we have also included uh, some um, some sample uh, NPCs for each rank. Uh, if uh, if if any game master wants to use them in their uh, adventures, uh, they're they're not all uh, they're not all like uh, very very detailed some of them are like one paragraph or two paragraph uh, and some of them have illustrations some of them don't uh, but uh, for each faction we have five uh, or six uh, NPCs uh, also included mm-hmm. now when it comes now when it comes to equipment um Something that something that I'm a bit I'm a bit curious about is in is in reg, is in regard to in regard to certain we, certain um, weapons and armor that are going that are going to op, obviously operate on op, operate a little bit differently than the than the tip than the medieval assumptions that um, vanilla D and D has with its with its weapons and armor. So yes. with that with that in mind. Putting us putting aside magic equipment because it's easy to make that unique. Um, are there in, are there any examples of what we- of weapons and armor that are going to be added to Caravia, or is it mostly going to be the um, stuff in vanilla? Yep, uh, of course we have uh, some uh, we have some weapons and armor uh, that are that are common items. They can have they can be uh, accessed by all. Uh, and uh, they will, uh, and also they work a little bit different from uh, their uh, their the rules of the uh, official uh, rule book. So, uh, of course, we we have uh, for for starters we have the gladius, uh, which is the the signature uh, blade, the, the signature. The sword of the uh, Carovian and uh, Carovian Empire, and also the Roman Empire. So uh, it uh, it's actually a, a sword that you can uh, both use as a long sword or a short sword, uh, depending on your choice. So uh, 
you you can uh, if uh, it it fits uh, to your uh, hand, uh, it fits uh, to the hand of a warrior very well. So uh, depending on the style of fighting, uh, you can choose to either use it as a long sword or a short sword. And also you have a small bonus when you are doing an attack of opportunity uh, with this abilities because uh, it's what it's designed for. It's uh, it's trying to uh, it's it's very perfect for uh, fighting in uh, close quarters. And once the enemy tries to uh, tries to get away from you, uh, you have to stab quickly uh, and uh, make sure that uh, she's not running away. Uh, before you catch her, so uh, it gives a small bonus uh, during attacks of opportunity, uh, the Gladius. And then uh, we, uh, let's say, uh, to give the list, we have the Falcata, mm -hmm. which is the uh, the Hispanic uh, sword. Uh, we have the Falx, uh, which is like uh, the, the the great blade of the uh, of the Dechian tribes. Uh, of the of the Thracians, uh, let's say, and uh, we we have the pilum, which is uh, similar to the javelin, but uh, it it has the uh, ability to uh, let's say uh, let's say nullify the uh, the bonuses of a uh, of a shield uh, carried by the uh, by the opponent. So you throw your pilum and it. It makes sure that the shield is now worthless. Uh, and for the item, uh, for the armor, we have uh, we have the scutum. Uh, that's the uh, that's basically the uh, the shield of a uh, of a Karovian legionary, and uh, it uh, it can uh, it can help uh, protect you uh, better than a standard shield, and it mm -hmm. and you also can. Um, you also can bash your opponent uh, with it if you like. Uh, if you want to forego one of your standard attacks, uh, you you can use the scutum, and uh, with its uh, with its powerful momentum, uh, make sure that the enemy uh, enemy uh, falls back a little, uh, and and gain some space for yourself, mm. uh, and. We also have the uh, the Lorica Hamata, uh, which is like the sh like a chain short, and we have the Lorica Segmentata, which is uh, like a, a pl plate mail, but it's not a full plate mail like a medieval knight. It's uh, it only protects uh, some uh, some parts of the body. Uh, so these are not very very different uh, from. Uh, from the uh, standard equipment, uh, but uh, let's say they replaced uh, some of uh, these equipments. So uh, let's say you you will. Uh, it's we we tell to the game uh, game masters that uh, there there should be no plate armors, no great swords, or no lances in this setting because the the iron. Uh, is not uh, so much common. The iron is very valuable, and uh, you you can't uh, produce uh, full plate armor uh, and equip your soldiers with it because, yeah, it's better to uh, if if you do that, uh, it's it's not efficient, and uh, there is not enough uh, iron to equip your army uh, with this. So. Uh, the historically inspired uh, equipment is very uh, much common, uh, and uh, just use them uh, instead of these uh, these other these plate armors, uh, great swords, and lances. Uh, there is also a note about it, uh, and that's that's pretty much all about the uh, the, the common equipment. Uh, yeah, as you say, there, there are some uh, magical equipments. Uh, some of them are uh, given uh, by the factions, and some of them are just uh, game masters can use them wherever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, they are also, yeah, very uh, how to say, uh, very historically uh, inspired from 
all parts of the ancient world. Uh, so uh, we we have a Spartan uh, spear, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, we have the uh, the armor uh, of the um, of a of a Carovian of a of a Roman uh, soldier, but they're uh, magical versions. Uh, the the uh, the magical uh, like the special Lorica uh, segmentata, then the special Galea, which is the uh, which is the helmet, uh, and uh, and of course the legion banners uh, are also uh, all all of them are uh, all of them have some uh, magic uh, in them, and uh, the 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 legion's banner carrier can uh, can use this magic. Uh, to uh, to bolster uh, the the war effort, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, what I can tell you about the uh, the armory so far. <laughs> All right, I got I got you. And with that with that in mind with that in mind, um. I know, I know you're get, I know you're getting pretty close to the finish line. But what, but um, what are you, but how, how much, what are you shooting for as far as the total page count with the, with the inclusion of the of the stretch goals and and some of the um, backer rewards? It will be about uh, my guess. It that will be about uh, somewhere between 120 pages and 150. Uh, but it it will also uh, we will we will see it during the uh, during the uh, the page uh, the, the paging uh, process. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, we we will see how it goes. But my estimation that it will be around 150 pages. Um, yeah. It, but it's hard to has, estimate uh, the, the exact count now. Mm -hmm. But with the, with that with that said, I would like to sincerely thank you once again for being open to coming back to the temple and enjoying the madness at play here. Yeah, you're you're welcome. It was an honor, uh, and I very much enjoyed it. Uh, and I I can talk for hours <laughs> if you like. Uh, about uh, about any game or about Karolia Victor, but uh, I think that, that uh, all good things have <laughs> have to come to an end. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Oh yeah, and I look I look forward I look forward to to do to um co to covering more of it covering more of it down the line, but for. And of course, and of course, anytime you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty and they victus. <laughs>